it really was. I, I'll, I actually remember back to a time back in, it was back in 2010. I was, it's after recruiting weekend, and after recruiting weekend, you have a chance to show off the great facilities, and you get to see the players and where they're all coming from. And I looked over at one of the other assistant coaches at the time, and I just said, is this not the best, best possible job that you could find? Um, great facilities, um, a great community, great town. 45 minutes from Nashville to an hour, well, an hour if normal people drive, 45 minutes if I'm driving. Um, and then an opportunity for you to be in a recruiting area that's so fertile and drivable. Because that really, in this day and age, recruiting is all about the unofficial visit. And it's, it's awesome to be able to have uh, a, a campus that's located strategically for players of all regions uh, from strong, talent-rich areas to be able to drive here to Bowling Green, Kentucky. So yes, uh, this has been a job that uh, I've, I've had my eye on for a long time. Todd, when you spoke to the current staff today, you know, how did they take this news? You know, I think they were they were awesome. They were. <laughs> I talked to him too. <laughs> I talked to him. <laughs> well, there's a, I mean, there's a couple answers to that. You know, obviously, and like we talked about a week and a half ago, um, I think college football is awesome. And and what's really unique about college football is every game matters. You know, a September regular season game can be key in determining who wins conference championships, who wins national championships. The one negative to college football is this. And what I mean by this is that you have a, when you have a team that has a great season and is, wins a conference championship, is preparing for a bowl game, goals you set back in, in the summertime, and then you have a coaching change. And that happens all, a lot. You know, that's just, that's just a byproduct of college football. So we've, we've done the best that we can to try to limit distractions and, and keep the focus on the football and keep the focus on the bowl game. And went kind of round and round uh, on what would be the best way to go about doing this. Uh, obviously, if we announced our head coach after the bowl game, that would be the best way to limit distractions. But really felt two things, that when we won, well, last night when we finalized everything with Mike, uh, to me, our players need to hear from their next head coach. And the way our calendar works, when the bowl game is played, they're not back here until the third week of January. So to name a head coach after the bowl game and then have our players be all over the country and not have a chance to, to meet and hear from their head coach for three and a half weeks, to me, is, is not good. That way it would not be fair to our players. With our current staff, you know, obviously it's tough for them because uh, of the unknown, of not knowing what the future would hold. So again, when we finalized it last night, it just felt like if I was in their shoes, I would want to know. I mean, if, if I wasn't going to be the guy, if, if somebody else was going to come in, I would want to know. And so to stall that and put on some kind of charade for five or six days and, and be misleading and hide out and things like that, that's just not how we do things. So uh, I met with uh, the coaches that had interviewed for the position this morning uh, personally and uh, they handled it like the pros that they are. Obviously, it was a tough conversation, uh, but they handled it very professionally. And then Mike, to his credit, actually spoke to uh, the entire football staff, our, our, our uh, interim coach, Nick Holt, the assistant coaches, and our football staff. Again, just so they could kind of hear from him. And uh, he's made himself available, and certainly we'll be talking to them some as time went on. And uh, we, you know, we'll do the press conference today. And then we'll we'll let them go back and focus on the bowl game. So I think all things considered, uh, I wouldn't want to try to pretend like it hasn't been a tough day for some people. But I think everybody's handled it professionally, and I think we're moving forward in the right manner. Yeah, that was a that was a great opportunity, really, for me to congratulate that staff on the work that they've done. And um, can't take away from anything certainly that uh, the accomplishments of of really the last last four or five years of this program are incredible. And that was, that was also the message that I had a chance to, to share with the team. Um, from knowing the state of the program of making the transition from FCS to FBS in 2010 and really being, you know, being very fresh and very new and living that firsthand to see where this program's at today, um, it's an incredible credit to those coaches in that room and it's a great credit to those seniors uh, that are going to be playing their last game at the Boca Bowl. So that was my challenge to those guys. You know, it was just this is your team. This is your last. This is the last uh, six days of the 2016 Western Kentucky football team, and you got to enjoy every bit of it. And you got to send these seniors out the way that they deserve to be sent out.
Lindsey Goff, I'm with CN2 Sports. What did you say to the players when you met with them today, and what was their response to you? I just told them how proud of that, how, how proud of them I was um, for the work that they've done, particularly those seniors, and um, certainly told them that we have a lot of work ahead, but that's going to wait till January. This is uh, this is Coach Holt's team um, going into the Boca Bowl. This is uh, the seniors' team, and uh, they're going to do a great job of pr propelling the Western Kentucky football program into a great place going into 2017. Um, the thing I just told them is that what a great opportunity for them against Memphis. Uh, just a, a good regional rivalry, a team that, um, that the Hilltoppers don't always get a chance to, to get, get on the field with and, and uh, by, uh, by virtue of a bowl game get a chance to settle the score on the field and that's a great opportunity and I can't wait to watch it. I also told them that uh, younger players I'm going to be evaluating, you know, and uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see what, the, what, what we're all about, you know, and uh, I think that they're in a really good place uh, and they've been prepared very, very well from what I've heard and even just from reading their body language. I was very impressed with the, the overall demeanor of that football team. Mike, how are the challenges differently when you go into a program like this that's already rolling versus when you came here six years ago and you guys are really starting to, to build something after a winless season? Yeah, good question. I, I think it's a, it's a tremendous challenge, and that's why you know, I think that when you come into an opportunity like this job, like you mentioned, um, you don't want to really come into it thinking, we just got to keep the status quo going. Um, you got to bring your own imp imprint on it. You, gotta, you have a chance to, 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 to do everything in your power to see exactly where the program's at, get to know everything uh, and, and what's under the hood and what makes this thing go, but then see how you can enhance it. And that's what, that's what I really believe that I'm tasked with doing, is bringing in the best staff that I possibly can um, and challenging these players uh, to work even harder. Um, as, as it once has been said, you know, the only way to get what you want to get on the football field is from just old hard work. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to get back to work. Um, this year is this year, and we're in 2016 is going to be over. It's going to be all about the 2017 Hilltopper football program. But for now, it's the 2016 season. There's still six days left, and these players get to enjoy those last six days. Elliot Pratt, Bowling Green Daily News. You talked about just the influences of your dad being as the head coach to see him sitting here um, today. Just number one, just talk about just how special a moment that is and how much do you imitate you know, his style and just what you've learned from him and what you take into now. Yeah. Well, it, it's incredible to have him here in the room. Um, it's incredible for, for both me. It's very, it's, it means a lot, obviously, to my mom um, and to my greater family that's watching all over, uh, all over the country. We're spread out pretty good. Um, but uh, I think the, the number one thing that I've taken from my dad is, is the relationships. Uh, this, is a, this is a people business that we're in. And this is a, uh, it, it, when you have a chance to coach, you have a chance to invest and better a young man. Um, and the thing that I've really been the most impressed with, uh, with, with my father, and, and particularly in his nine years of being a head football coach, is how he's made the coaches that he's had under him better men and better coaches. And he hasn't done it by micromanaging them. He hasn't done it by um, you know, trying to tell them exactly what needs to be done at all times. But he's, he's challenged them to become better husbands, better fathers. Um, and, and to obviously invest even more in their young athletes' lives. And I've seen that firsthand for, for quite some time. And then not to mention, I've learned a lot about football from him. Uh, you know, have a ch he's had a chance to, to coach a lot of positions at a lot of places and have a lot of years uh, under his belt. And through the years, uh, we're on the phone multiple times a week during the season, and uh, I, have, I have questions that I'll come up with. It could be technically related in the football side of things, but it certainly a lot of times has to do with just how to handle search, certain situations with players or with other coaches. And um, the thing I've always been impressed with him is that his faith and my faith very similarly have always uh, really governed the way that he uh, lives his life as a football coach. And uh, I, I hope to be worthy of that as I continue in this great endeavor. Todd, what are the benefits of bringing in someone who comes from a lot of different winning backgrounds, coming from the Boise State tradition, the Harbaugh tree, Notre Dame? What are the benefits of having someone that has all the different kind of experience? I think there's tremendous benefits. I mean, we, we all are essentially the accumulation of our experiences. And I think when you look at, at Mike's experiences, uh, they're not only unique, but unique and successful. You know, and you're, you're talking about just the Ivy League and the Pac-12 and Notre Dame and Stanford and obviously here at Western Kentucky and at Boise State as a player and a coach. I mean, each of those institutions and conferences is unique in their own way. And so to be a part of, of, of all of that 
uh, to experience a very different set of challenges that occurs from being at each of those places and to overcome that and have success to me is uh, tremendously impressive and I think just speaks volumes about what Mike Sanford's all about. Coach, this is for you. Uh, <laughs> tell us a little bit about your offense, uh, what we're going to see out there offensively from you guys. Well, the, the thing that I, I definitely um, have had a chance to, to, to be around are some great offensive systems that really have looked a lot different from one another. And um, I think that, like, ex like exactly Todd just mentioned, even uh, just from, from a uh, philosophical standpoint, you're going to be impacted by those coaches and those cultures that you've been around. I think the same holds true with the offensive side of the game of, of football. Um, and what I like to do with, with offensive football is to blend all my experiences together. Um, so what I, I'm going to want to hire an offensive coordinator, and I'm going to want to try to, uh, to to groom that offensive coordinator to call plays. However, I want to be very involved with that with that uh, process. I also want to be very involved with the quarterback position group. I feel like that's an area that I, I have a passion for, and, and certainly have had some uh, some success with some of the players that that have played that position. And uh, but the offense in and of itself is going to be up tempo. There's going to be uh, pace to what we do. It's going to be multiple. It's going to be uh, very. We're going to utilize very varied, varied personnel groups. We're going to get in and out of uh, of multiple tight end sets, and then no tight tight end sets. Maybe two backs at a time. And what I've always found in offensive football is important to 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 make sure that your what you do offensively is is a reflection of what your roster is, and then recruit to what you want to do as you go forward. So we'll certainly be in the process of getting to know the roster. I do know a pretty good amount about it, about it already, but I'll continue to, to uh, try to un uncover that as, as, the, as the weeks move forward. Mike, how much easier does it make your job knowing that you already have a quarterback here ready to go? Well, when I was uh, talked to Todd I, uh, and he, we first talked about this this job, the, the thought I, the thought I had was I need to get in touch with Mike White, the very first order of business. Um, Got to get your quarterback to uh, to, to, to understand um, the importance of his leadership and the importance of what what he needs to do going forward. And so uh, it worked out very well that as we were walking into the building, leading up to uh, to team meetings um, today, and having a chance to be in front of that team, I had a, I had a chance to to meet with Mike. And uh, what, a, what an impressive young man, uh, great stature, looks like a, a player that, that uh, loves the game of football and has unbelievable leadership potential. And um, I'm really excited about the chance to work with him. Uh, it looked like he was excited to, to be coached uh, by me and by the staff that I'm going to assemble. And he's, he's a really special talent. And what, the, what, what he's accomplished has been very, very impressive here at Western.